Y254 Imagine Welcome to the Power Talk Show with me, Dominic. It's another Wednesday, and today I've got so many. I've got a great guest, and I've got a great audience all the way from Nibs. Can I hear some noise, by the way, when I say that? <laughs> <laughs> and, and also from the University of Nairobi. Yeah. 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 Thank God, Akuna Mawe. So um, <laughs> today we are, ha we are having a conversation, a, con a very important conversation. But before even we speak about that. I've got some great performances lined up for you. It is it is Naul? Nyuru. Nyuru. Yes. I hope I'm I'm not saying oh it's good it's great. So Nyuru band is performing and I think there's some the, another guest called Shaul uh, is gonna be uh, performing also. So welcome to this great show. Remember to go to our social media pages. Uh, that is Facebook, um, Y254 channel, comment there. I'm gonna be reading out your comments on the, on the screen behind me. So I'd like you to be part of this conversation together with the students uh, from NIBS, other guests from outside the University of Nairobi and uh, our performances tonight. And as I mentioned, you're gonna be having a great conversation which I'll be telling you about after the first performance. But for now, I want to give to Nauru to start, uh, to start off the show and the audience to Simame so that we can, you know, you know, we get, we get into this now, all right? So, let's go. And what's a new, new word? And I, new band. New room, sorry, new room, it's new room band, all right? Love I had to follow you always on my mind to keep my thoughts right. Wako nisha jipa kwa wazazi tutafika niko maji kwa penzi lako. Instant love I had to follow you always on my mind to keep my thoughts right. Wako nisha jipa kwa wazazi tutafika niko maji kwa penzi lako. Whenever I look into your eyes, boy una dunda. In a pagawana, can't find what I feel. Cause ni we we, ni mecha gua.
say, I don't want to say your band, uh, band name wrong, so please say again. Neuroband. Neuroband. As soon as you're saying new rules. New rules. Oh, new, new rules. rules, okay. Yeah. New, new rules band. band. Oh, new band, okay. So what's your name? My name is Shazi. Shazi, uh huh. You're the lead singer, I guess, of course. Wow. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. And okay, uh, how long have you been, uh, Neuro ha has been around? Uh huh. To like anniversary to June. June. So we are our one year anniversary. So Bado, uh -huh. one year is not yet. Our next month or one month, eh? Okay. One so one year. One year. Yeah. So say your name again. Neuro. No, no, your name. Oh, my name is Shazi, Shazi, Shazi. Shazi. I don't know. Yeah. My it went to a different name. I don't know how to say which name, which one, but it went to a different name. Okay. And then uh, the gentleman. I'm Buni. Buni. Yeah. All right. Uh huh. And you've been with this band since the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, the gentleman. Edu. The the guitarist Edu. Yeah. Man, you have great voices, you people. I'm See this, eh? Yeah. You guys are great. Eh? Yeah. Uh, Thank uh, you. Washa maneno. Kweda. so. <laughs> Thank you so much for making time to come to my show. Thank You're you gonna do us. be performing a few yes, more yes. Item, yes. Uh, uh, songs, right? We yeah. got you. You, you got us. Yeah. Great. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have had the Nuru band. I hope I got that right this time round. And I want to start right away into the conversation today uh, to introduce the topic that we have today. And today we are speaking about that your family history uh, affects your present story. And what does it mean? that do not ignore that how you related with your father and mother and your, and, your, and your brothers and sisters back at your family or whether you're a single child, all those things do affect the way you relate with people today, your work relationships, your romantic relationships, maybe why you keep uh, dating the wrong people. Your family history might be affecting the way you relate with people today. And that's the conversation that we're going to be having today. And to help us with that conversation is Dr. Karo Chakua, who is a psychotherapist and a parenting coach, and she's, gonna, she's going to be our guest today. So stick with us, and again, remember what I've mentioned to you, go to our Facebook page, uh, Y254 channel, and be part of this conversation by commenting there, asking questions and, uh, and uh, stating your opinions. And I'll be reading them out in the second segment of my interview with uh, Dr. Chakua today. And so right now I'm gonna give uh, it this uh, this time too. Now I'm. I hope I get the name right. Shaul. Shaul. Yeah. Shaul. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna give her the chance to Shaul, who is going to be, uh, perform a spoken word. Is it? Uh, Shaul, just move. Uh, come. Uh, so Shaul is going to is a poet. A spoken word. My yes. that. Uh, what's your name though? Shaul. Shaul. No, Shaul yes. Those, that is not. That, that's not just your stage name. It's also your. The Hebrew name for Paul. Ah, Paul. Okay. Ah, I got you. All right. So go for it. Prepared a piece, but the Kaunachani Kay Kaleo. It's called Upendo. Nilikuna Penzi. Penzi wa that. But in Upendo, to depend on a son. Alini Pendawakati Siko and Akakitu, like Nikola Lotta Swali and Alikua Jibu. Alini Pendawakati Siko and Haki. Ile right to Nilikuana and him call on a bad well in Shikilia. Alini Pendawakati. Ilikuwa bubu lakini mystery zilikuwa evident kama lights kwa forehead ya msudi alinipenda wakati I was a nobody ile nyumba nilishi hata ingeitwa bed sita maana haikuwa na ta kwa na ta bed haikuwa na ta ta nigiza tu yana alifanya ikangaa nilikuwa na lala mchana usiku na shida ni kichana nyewe jua alisema nataka to straight forward from the head so siwezi sema alinichizisha upendo wa so it mean na hivyo ndo tulikashikisha Pendo nge tembelea singe mwekea nyingo za mapenzi Nge mwekea wimbo wa taifa ndo wa shinde Kuzimama na ukiisha na anza wosi ndo wa pigia magoti Sikuwa na mahali na weza keti Halini ya lewa tuwa hata kiniambia nyumba yangu siene wa tabungi Hati hata kuja kutafuta kiti Hali stick na mimi Kani ngezi ya marafiki ya kafanya tu shikane zaidi na familia Unge nikosea nge kombia pote kwanza Unge nikanyanga nge kanyagia and let it pass Pendo was my only love until until ili popata kazi, pesa, mali, hela ika ni introduce kwa ukwasi, ukwasi ika ni introduce kwa kiburi pride, ni kanza kurealize kumbe na kuonga na macho, ni kanza kujiona I became selfish when I see them, I saw myself when they speak sense to me, it was rapid I viewed everyone as trash and I think no man upendo waka ni dumb but was I hurt? no, I lived in self-denial but action spoke volumes. I became a criminal. 
but I was rich enough to buy my way out of any situation. The pay that I gave to that poor man who worked for me was oppression. Nilikuwa na hadi fair ya kunifikisha to the land of unfairness, but when I landed there, I found no family, no friends like this. Everything that money could have buy. But but it couldn't. Like there's a vacuum in my heart. Upendo njoo na ujaze pengo nimeachana na kiburi mpango wa kando I thought nikiona pesa sitamhitaji but I was wrong so please come back my love my life is too dark come and light my candle wait ndo huyu here she comes glowing like a thousand lamps in one upendo mejawa na upendo na mekubali we get back together now this time sita me spread iki come nitaiweza Nangalau this time makini tembele hata kosa kiti because my heart is a seed na see plastic it can fake anything in fact my heart is now a throne on which upendo will sit on first Corinthians chapter 13 I can prophesy I can speak big I can become <laughs> but without love yote liburi liushauri thank you Woo! amazing on angalia what you spoken what you 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 snap your fingers <laughs> shall amazing wow okay i hope it's not real I mean, even if it's real it's it's, it's better even better <laughs> it's, it's uh, you oh, you're reciting for a friend Definitely, right yeah, yeah for a friend right i see you <laughs> you'll be coming back i might you yes, might I get on, uh, if i get something sometime. awesome give a hand to shaul thank you awesome Ladies and gentlemen, now we've come to that part where we start our interview today. And as I've mentioned to you, I want you to go to our Facebook page, Y254 channel. There is a, a post there about the show today. And I want you to tell me, do you feel that possibly where you came from has been affecting the way you are happy today? How you're relating with people? Do you think your past in the family that you grew up has affected the way you are able to interact with people today, especially loneliness? Uh, one of the biggest causes of loneliness is could be that you have never felt loved and, uh, and a sense of belonging from maybe to your dad or to your mom or to your even brothers and sisters. But you don't remember your family as a place that was a place you could really call home, a place you could be you without punishment, a place you could say, I am truly loved and accepted. So be part of this conversation by going to our Facebook page and commenting on that. And now I want us to start right away with our guest today, Dr. Chakua. I keep, I keep check, I have to keep checking that name to make sure that I'm getting it right. Y you can say Dr. Caro. Dr. Caro. Yes, ah, that's fine. Oh, yes. That's perfect. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you and very thank much. Thank you. Thank you for making time to be here. It's my pleasure. It's a pleasure, yes. right? Ah, this is it's my pleasure first of all. Now, please tell us a little bit about, about yourself for the sake of uh, the audience and uh, viewers from home. Okay. I am a psychotherapist. Who is that? What what that is is a yes, practicing. Yes, I wanted to ask what an animal okay. is that. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, not an animal. Uh, oh, good. Uh, it's uh, I'm a practicing psychologist, mm -hmm. and what I do when I work with my clients, I really help them explore why they are stuck, where they are stuck, and most of the time, my my direction always goes to issues they could have encountered in mm. their past for mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. them to be where they are, Perfect. to help them unstuck. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm also a parenting coach and how I got into parenting was because again most of the clients that came into my space had parenting related issues mm -hmm. and I thought that maybe the best thing is to equip the parents so that they can create better environments for their children so that their children don't end up in therapy. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm really, really passionate about. So I also teach psychology uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. at a public university. Where is that? More university. More university. Yes. Are you a lecturer there? Yes, oh, I'm perfect. a lecturer. Perfect. Now, this today's conversation is a rather interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we are trying to paint a picture, and that's what I want you to help us understand, where we are saying that one should not ignore their family history yes. because that could have a significant impact in the way they relate with other people. Yes. So maybe a young man could be going from one relationship into another romantic relationship, uh, not knowing why he attracts the wrong people mm -hmm. or a lady attracts the wrong men into her life mm -hmm. and Kumbe the reason is so could you paint that picture for us so that we can understand better what this is all about yeah um, first there's there's a I know that this conversation someone is likely to 
mistake it and say, okay, now we are blaming the past. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the issue is not really blaming the past, but acknowledging that where you are at could have aspects of your past. Perfect. So what happens is that as a child, you are very, um, how, how we are wired as human beings, how God created us is that we are pleasure seeking human beings. We are pleasure seeking people. That means we seek out positive experiences. And as a child, that's just natural. That's why when a child is cold, they cry. When they're hungry, they cry because they're like, hey, uh, I need my needs met. So because of that, if we experience um, situations that bring, that, uh, that go against that, that probably are painful, that are uncomfortable, then that becomes, that is not normal. Mm -hmm. And therefore it leaves gaps as we grow. Okay. So basically, uh, if, I, if I get you a list, uh, so if I grew up with a father who was unaffectionate, that's mm -hmm. the gap you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. Is that, 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 no, that causes a gap? Yes. Uh -huh. See, so naturally, mm -hmm. I, want, I want my needs met immediately. Naturally, I want to receive love. Naturally, I want to be able to trust the environment. And so if the caregivers in our space when we were young were not able to provide that, then we grow up seeking ways. It's like um, you hear this phrase people say unfinished business mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know unfinished business sometimes sounds like a cliche and maybe people say that one has unfinished business and we laugh it off but the reality is that there is unfinished business and if you have unfinished business you will always seek to finish that business and that <coughs> is now for looking looking for ways of fixing that unmet gap in, in effective ways, in our relationships, in our behaviors, in how we are interacting with people, in how we are responding to situations. Mm, yes. Mm. Okay, now, um, so uh, I'm gonna use a, a very rough example just to, to create this. Um, one, one of the things that have been happening recently in the media mm -hmm. uh, are young men uh, who have been killing uh, their, let's say, people they love because they People, they, they were loved, not love them back. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to say, okay, there could be a myriad of reasons why they did that, yeah. okay? Mm. But do you think it's, it can also be traced uh, to a broken family? Could it be traced that they came from a situation where they learned violence is the only way to go? That could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be a possibility. It could be because that's all they have seen as a way of resolving issues. It could be because, well, they could even be having a mental illness. Yes, correct. You know, that, that's, mm. that, that's also a, a factor. But um, f for them to get to the point that they did, they just didn't wake up that morning, mm. like Tuesday morning, to go and do what it is that they did. It's something that has piled up uh, over time. It's, it could be experiences that they went through and they felt that violence is the only way to solve this because that is what f is familiar to them. To them. Mm. And the, 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 the tragedy of it is that on a normal day, they, they do not want to do that, mm -hmm. but they find themselves in those repeated cycles mm -hmm. because they do not have the skills. They never got the skills when they were young to be able to cope with uh, stressful situations, mm -hmm. to be able to cope with uh, uh, situations that they're not rejection. comfortable. Yeah, ah. to, to cope with rejection. Mm -hmm. And um, they probably sought, out, sought relationships for the sake of filling that gap because they're feeling rejected. And so because they were broken, they are likely to attract broken people mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, the blind leading the blind. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So that that's probably what what is likely to happen. And mm -hmm. so when you're broken and this other person is broken, definitely, like you're saying, the blind mm -hmm. leading the blind, mm -hmm. you're really not mm -hmm. going to get anywhere. Tr true. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, le let's trace back. A hi let's pick a hypothetical situation where uh, a lady has grown up with a father who is not emotionally present or maybe violent. Mm -hmm. What are the possible future behaviors of such a lady? So as a young child, what she will believe is that she's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she goes, she, she, she gets into the world knowing that she's not good enough. And that's what children do. They, do, they, they turn the unfortunate situations on themselves and take the blame. So my father rejected me or my father was violent or whatever to me because I am the cause. And so they grow up believing, and that all that all this is unconscious. It's mm, not mm. written anywhere. Mm -hmm. So they grow up believing that they are not good enough, they are not worthy of love. And because of that, then they go out of their way to try to prove how worthy they are. And therefore, if mostly if it's a, a relationship with a dad that wasn't, wasn't right, then they're going to tend towards uh, 
father figures or men that we want to be they will want to seek approval and love from men to mm. fill that gap like i said it's unfinished mm. business mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all this is unconscious Correct. so to finish this business mm. because i didn't get that love then i'm going to get a love projected to somebody else yes and the love of a mm. man and the love okay of a man. and Correct. it will be i will do anything mm. and unconsciously you get attracted to the same kind of person that your father was that your father was because that unfinished business says i have to go back to my father and mm. finish this business mm. of completing this love correct, correct. yeah so a, a girl might be attracted to a, a, a gentleman who in the beginning of the relationship it looks his uh, possession is like she you know the, this guy is protecting and so she feels comfortable yes but over time what she thought was protection becomes possession and it, control exactly. and violence yeah, exactly. because the, she's as you're saying she's trying to do some unfinished business yeah. interesting yeah now, and, and usually mm -hmm. those signs mm. are there right from the start you know this thing people say he he just changed suddenly mm. no mm. it's just that when you're getting into that relationship you know the homo the the feel-good hormones yes, are correct, really high yeah. so they, uh. they overtake the realities that that you see they blind you they, they bli yeah mm, they blind you mm, yeah mm. yeah go ahead yeah. very good now now let's uh, now paint a picture of now a gentleman mm -hmm. a gentleman i want us to explore maybe a parent by parent so we have now a gentleman uh, or a young boy growing up with a father who is emotionally absent or violent mm -hmm. what what becomes of this young man what are possible projectile of the life projectile of this young man emotion okay. so is this violent what's the Violent, so maybe, maybe violent towards the father, I mean, and towards also, the mother and okay. towards the children, or is it simply emotionally absent, or yeah, yeah. Um, the likely trajectory, and mm. you know, this is case by case. I always say people end up differently yes, because, yes. you mm. know, their personalities are different and other Absolutely. circumstances can come into place. And but choice. the likely, mm. yeah, and mm. choice as mm. well. But the likely trajectory is that they will soak in that. This is the, 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 this is the only way they know mm -hmm. life is. Okay, Correct. and they will, even as they are growing, they might be like, no, I don't like that. I think I'm going to be different. And they might even set themselves to try and be different. Correct. But they will still end up, because that is the familiar. When, when, and it's, it's like a sponge. Yeah? Mm -hmm. when, when, when you, a sponge you, soaks, you know, it soaks and soaks. So Correct. as children, we soak in. We soak mm -hmm. you, so the boy was soaking the violence. The boy was soaking that kind of environment. And then... The only time it will come out is when they are squeezed. Mm -hmm. So, and when they are squeezed is when under pressure. Correct. Okay. So, when mm. when that pressure comes out, when you squeeze, you you'll get out the same exact thing that you soaked in. You mm. cannot get um, apple juice when you soaked in uh, orange juice. Orange juice or mango <laughs> juice. Or let's even say uh, bad water, just because you're you're soaking exactly. you're soaking spoiled water. You cannot give out juice. Yeah, you juice. can. Yeah, uh -huh. you can't give out juice. It if might you, look yeah. have that color, but, uh, but really, it's, it's still it's still dirty water. Okay. So that mm. that is the likely trajectory that mm -hmm. whatever you soak in is mm. what you get out, especially under pressure. Under pressure. Yeah. Okay. Now now let's look now on the, on the other side. So we have a lady who is growing up with an absentee mother, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Or with a mother who is, let's say, even if violent or does, she does not understand, she does not feel understood by the mother. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have, uh, are there similar projectiles or yeah. trajectory? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's similar. Mm -hmm. Male, female, you know, we are all, we are all at mm -hmm. the end of the day, mm -hmm. we are human mm -hmm. and our psychological makeup is pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, when push comes to shove, there are specific ways we respond to things. Mm -hmm. But even for the lady, it's going to be the same thing. You still soak it in and you'll still get out what it is, what, uh, yeah. what you soaked in mm -hmm. uh, under a lot of pressure. And mm -hmm. most of the time, is, like I said, children believe certain things about themselves mm -hmm. when life does not go well. And those things they believe about themselves, they start, they set out in life to either prove those things wrong, or to try and live according to those. Things. For example, Correct. if you say I am not good enough, mm. you will um, because you're feeling you're not good enough. So one to 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 go against that, mm -hmm. you want to be the good girl, people pleaser, or the good boy, a doormat, just so that you can prove to the world the mm. belief that you are mm. not so good enough. Approval is more important to you than being authentic. That being authentic. Uh. But then you can go to the other side and say, mm. hey, you think guys think I'm not good enough? You I rebel. will show you, uh. okay? And then now you become aggressive. So both, of, both extremes mm. still come back to um, I'm not good enough. That's why the bully mm. and the doormat could have the same 
uh, in family about history. Or, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. yeah, family or mm. same experiences mm. or mm. beliefs about themselves. And, but how they interpreted it yeah. unconsciously becomes exactly. the main. Now, uh, our, our audience here are students, right? Yes. So how could the, the family history affect the academics precisely? Academics? Ah. Ah. It really depends on the level of what they believe, what, what their parents believed about education. Mm. The kind of pressure the parents put them through just to get the marks and the grades will affect how they, they, they view academics. Yeah. Uh, how their parents viewed success. Is success being good at sports or is success having a good report card at the end of the day? So wherever they are at this point as university students, they're still carrying, carrying a lot of beliefs mm. about what their parents thought success to be, failure to be, were they pushed too much to be a certain way? Well, there are just an easygoing way to look at education, mm. you know? So it really, again, depends on what views mm -hmm. they soaked in. So what if someone was constantly criticized? Mm -hmm. How does that translate into, how can that affect the academic performance? So you're constantly criticized, so you believe you're not good enough, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And therefore you will struggle in school mm -hmm. or you will prove that you're not good enough. And that's why I say this thing can go either way. Mm. So if you're criticized so much and in, at the back of your mind you're like, when I get out of here, I will prove mm -hmm. that I am good and therefore, you want to get your identity from performance, mm, okay, okay, to okay. Be, being, you know, performance, which, you know, unfortunately in, in our era, it's really just about academic performance. About papers, yes. Yeah, mm, mm. yeah. So if you're criticized, you can either believe that to be true or mm. you can decide to go against it. So mm -hmm. it, it, it can still go either way. Someone and could be failing exams because suddenly they have this voice in them that they have taken from their father or mm -hmm. mother or someone in the family yes. who constantly told them that they're not good enough. Yes. So anytime they see an exam paper, despite all the preparation, they end up failing they freak out, simply yes. because the disease voice telling them constantly they're not good enough. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing you say. Yes, and, uh -huh. and, 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 and it's because the environment surrounding exams and education was just an anxious environment. Mm. So they connect exam to anxiety mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter like you're saying doesn't matter how well they have prepared mm. exam is equal to anxiety mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. maybe it was because during that time the parents were also anxious mm. and i don't know if I, I mean i've seen that because i work with parents you know when kids are doing class eight or kids are doing from four the level of anxiety the parents have is way more than what the, 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 the kids the, have yeah uh, and, and kids, this naturally just soak in that, mm. that, um, mm. that, that, that anxiety, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, before we take a break, uh, I have, uh, we're going to take a short break now, but I have seen, especially girls, uh, mm. stick into very abusive relationships because mm -hmm. the fear of being lonely, having grown up from uh, families where they were unloved, mm. uh, they may, they, 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 it motivates them to stick into very abusive relationships mm -hmm. simply because the idea of being alone mm -hmm. is more scary mm -hmm. than the fact that they're being in an emotional and physical abusive relationship. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, and then that's very unfortunate because mm -hmm. also society um, pushes us to, to, to want to hook up and to be with someone. Like mm -hmm. that's the thing, that mm -hmm. if I'm not with someone, then there's, there's something, something wrong, wrong with me. With me. Correct. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so I'd rather stick, into the, uh, stick in that relationship, as mm -hmm. abusive as it is. Or because they don't feel good enough, mm -hmm. they, re they feel like whatever abuse they're experiencing is their fault. And Correct. that's another very unconscious thing that we have. We're like, it's my fault. Maybe if I had just not said what I said, he this person would me. not have done ah, this, you okay. know? And, 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 and it's very easy for women and for girls to believe that mm -hmm. because they're also feeling unworthy and Correct. they feel like uh, it's, it's, it's the girl's or the woman's job to keep this relationship together. And yeah. So if it's not working, it's, it's your woman's fault. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Wow. All right. So we're going to take a short break right now, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're enjoying this conversation, uh, dear viewer. And I want you, I remember what I mentioned to you, please go to our Facebook page. And if you have a question to our psychologist, our psychotherapist here, Dr. Caro, please do so. Ask a, a question or make a comment or suggestion. I'm going to also give, be giving my audience a, a time to ask a question about after this performance uh, it's from Nuru. And so please go to our Facebook page at Y254 channel and post your comments there, your questions, suggestions, and we are going to be reading them out. Remember, we are discussing the fact that where you come from, your family, the relationships you have with your family, your parents can be affecting the way you live your life today. So be part of this conversation. But for now, 
I'm going to give it back to Nyuru. Let's go. Napanga safari kurudi nyumbani huku niliko hali ngumu mawazo kichwani mateso jamani maswali moyoni Uhali gani kipenzi changu uliye nyumbani Kila siku najililia mawazo kichwani na ngamia nimechoka kuvumilia nikuwa kumpenzi nitatumbia Kila siku najililia mawazo kichwani na ngamia nimechoka kuvumilia nikuwa kumpenzi nitatumbia Narudi Ninapo kuwaza moyo hautuli. We, yes. wacha ni kuambe yo story zo. Ha, ninapo kuwaza moyo hautuli. Aya basi karibu ni tena kwenye. We, no, that's gone. Uh, welcome back to the Power Talk Show, man. Uh, that was New Band performing a beautiful. Uh, that's that's your yeah. Yeah. original. Yeah, ish. you people. Even the first one. Yeah. It was an original. Yeah. Wow. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are getting married, huh? This is the band. Yeah. If uh, you are graduating, this is the band to call if if you are doing if something good is happening like you being alive celebrating that you're alive this is the band if you're performing if you have your first anniversary of your existence as a band 
next month. This is the band to call to perform during Yay. your first anniversary. All right. So very good. Uh, that was Nuru. And I'm, I'm going to give, uh, remember what I mentioned to you, ladies and gentlemen, go to our Facebook page, uh, Y254 channel, and comment there uh, your opinions, your suggestions. I'd like to read them. But for now, I'll ask you to pass the mic to the audience so that we can, uh, uh, we can, we can uh, have a few questions. So can I see by a show of hand uh, the four the, who have the questions, the four? All right, so let's start from back there, from the gentleman as we come. So, uh, name, where you're studying, brief question. Let's go. Okay, my name is Mustafa from the UN. So, my question is, um, if you are brought up in this family where, like, the father is that guy who only makes the decision, does not leave for any other guy to make any decision, and you have a problem, like a few years old, and... Uh, Obviously, you're not going to approach him, and you're not going to tell your mom because the decision is going to come from the father. And you go and uh, have uh, ask like the peers, like advice, you know. And obviously, they are going to give you the wrong advice. How are you supposed to go about that? Because they are the only people who understand you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. What's your name again? Mustafa. Mustafa. Thank you so much. Pass the mic to the gentleman right in front there. Uh huh. Go for it. My name is Farme from the Great UN. The great UN. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Yes, please. The question is, how can someone sustain that negativity where he feels like he's ne being neglected or discriminated from uh, the family? How can one cure it very easily? So you, you, what the, your question is, you feel rejected and you are, you, are, you are trying to wonder how do you deal with that? Yes. Okay. So you're going to first of all answer those questions. You can pa pass the mic to the lady here. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, maybe we handle those two questions, okay. and then we go back to the two ladies. Yeah. All right. So Mustafa uh, was talking about how how he can, you know, coming from a family where the father makes okay, most okay. of the decisions. Uh, okay, okay. Um, and so, what do you do? What because do you do? Because if you go to the mother, still, it's the dad is going to make the decision either way. Yes. Mm. Yes. Well, um, it's 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 a bit hypothetical. I wish I was clearer about a specific issue, mm. but in a general sense, um, you know, what I do when I work with my my clients is really help them figure out first of all what do they believe about themselves. Okay, and sometimes what you believe about you, you, yourself becomes, you, you project it and, 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 and because your history has been, he'll not listen anyway. Mm. So you, you've given up, we, mm -hmm. we call it learned helplessness. Mm. You become helpless and you don't, you know, you, you, you give up. So I, I would say, what have you believed about yourself and mm. would you start focusing on the fact that you, do, you still do have qualities and strengths mm. within mm. yourself that mm. You can actually make uh, decisions. Some of those decisions you mm. can make without necessarily having to get the final word from mm. from your father. Then also, there are things in life that you know. You you. What do you have control over in mm -hmm. this in in your situation at that point? What do you have control over? What decisions can you make and be okay with them? And then the rest, you you you. <laughs> You do that prayer, we always say, God, um, mm. grant me th the serenity to accept what is within. What I, yeah, yeah w w to, to accept what I... The things that I cannot change. Yeah. To, the courage to, to, yeah, the courage, to change the, the things, things that I can, can change. Can, and, and the, the wisdom, wisdom to, to, know, know the to, to, to know the difference. Mm. Um, so I, I wish there was a little bit more specificity, mm. but I think... Let's, let's, put a, let's put a specific uh, uh, example. Eh? Yes. So let's say... This is a student, right, and you're going to the third year, and the father said, I'm not going to pay your school fees, mm -hmm. and the mother cannot do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I think we can, being the students, I'm trying to imagine that that could be a very, uh, an example to go with, okay? So here I am. I want to go to my third year university, and my father said, when uh, I'm mm. going to and there is nothing you can do. He is the one who is going to make the final decision. I'm imagining that's a hypothetical situation. I, I think for me, mm -hmm. when it comes to you know finances and fees, mm. if that's the source it's coming from, that's the source it's coming from. So what else can you, what, what, what do you have within yourself that can help you think of ways of generating income, for mm -hmm. example? Mm -hmm. Because that's for me a clear case of I have no control. I can't go and you know, put a gun in his face and say, give me the money. Okay, mm. but again, back to what have you believed about yourself? Am I helpless? Is this the end of the road for mm. me? What mm. else can I do mm. to be able to, 
to, to, to get money? Mm. What other ways can I, I mean, the, the options are not necessarily limited. Mm. If you, what other ways can I um, use to mm. get to get income? And to so this door has been closed. Yes. Let me see if I can pass through the window, yes. even if it's gonna take a bit lo longer than I had expected. Yeah. Uh, I, I keep looking for spaces that I can yeah, and that mm. comes when you start believing that you are actually capable and mm. you're not the same person, you, you, you're not into that space of learned helplessness where okay. now I can't do anything. So what other options are there? Available for you. Are relatives, could relatives be involved? What, it, what else can you do? Mm. Yeah. Can I involve my pastor? Can I involve the yes. uh, extended family? Yeah. Okay, so then we have the second question of uh, how do I deal with ne constant negativity, rejection? Yes, mm. and, 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 and I, uh, Mfalme was very specific. How can I make these feelings go away? quickly mm, mm, you know mm. <laughs> and so the reality is that those f negative feelings will not go away quickly just acknowledging that that feelings are there because of a reason therefore why first of all do I have those feelings and not necessarily how can I just make them go away in the first place mm, quickly mm, okay mm. We, we we have been socialized to to, to not express our emotions, and especially men, okay? But even, I mean, either way, you, you are chapwad, then you're told, do not even open your mouth, do mm. not even cry. So, you know, uh, or maybe you go through a situation and you're feeling sad and someone ask you, asks you, why are you sad? What is wrong with you? So we have been socialized not to, uh, to have feelings, to acknowledge them mm. and to express them. Mm. And therefore, for me, the first thing I would say, um, Faume, is, Whatever feelings those are, negative feelings, they are valid. They come from a place. And we have to acknowledge that those feelings are there. If you don't, you will suppress them and somehow they will chomoka in another way, you mm, know? Mm. So ac accept, accept, accept them, mm -hmm. acknowledge that they are mm, there, mm. and ask yourself, where are they coming from? They're always having to come from somewhere. And that's one of the areas that we need to start training ourselves, even as students, mm. as human beings, to just be able to sit back and ask ourselves, what is going on with me right now? Perfect. Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling right mm, now? Mm. What exactly happened? Mm -hmm. And where is it coming from? Correct. For correct. The, in this moment, why am mm. I? So if you're able to acknowledge that and feel that, by the way, it takes away, it relieves a lot mm. of the negative feelings correct, correct. because you're able to pinpoint it and say, this is the reason mm. where it's coming from. And if you practice that over and over again, mm. you start becoming more present and more self-aware mm. to the fact that Right now, what I'm feeling is a lot of sadness. Very and awesome. the reason I'm feeling a lot of sadness is mm. because mm. I was expecting my dad to pay fees and, and he, he has not paid and fees. Not pay, yeah, and I feel like my future is in gone. Peril, yeah. yeah. Mm. Just giving uh, an name, explanation yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, giving a name to your feeling and mm. ex an explanation mm. already relieves. And once mm. that is relieved, mm. what happens is that even the brain gets the message that things are not so bad. Correct. Okay, yeah, we can and handle this. We can handle this, mm. and you can. You actually, you start thinking differently Correct. when you allow yourself to acknowledge yeah, the bad yeah. feelings. Mm. Yes. You, re you reminded me of this bad advice that I hear sometimes people saying, telling someone going through a bad time, you should not feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. should not feel that way. Yeah. You know? Emotions, uh, you cannot tell a person what not to feel about a situation, exactly. you know, yeah, so yeah. that's a, yeah. and maybe what I could add there to Mfalme is forgiveness, you know, <laughs> forgiveness, and don't allow anyone to tell you forgive and forget, that's a very bad advice, it's a mm. terrible advice, mm. okay, mm. yes, so forgiving, forgiving is about letting go of the anger and the, and the resentment and what hurts you, forgetting is, is wrong, you should not forget because forgetting is you have forgotten the lesson, and that's why people continue into a very abusive relationship because they forgive and then they forget the, the, the lesson that they, they learned from that, whatever they were forgiving. Mm -hmm. So forgive, but do not forget, mm -hmm. okay? So I think that some of us have been told that advice that is a terrible advice, okay? For, for, for it's a really, really terrible advice that can make you trap yourself in very ter terrible uh, environments. Okay, I'm gonna read some comments before I give it back there. So we have uh, Rico Atiga Eric saying, yes, it can really affect if you do not accept the situation you have gone through and find a way to work out of it. Thank you so much, Eric. Then we've got Steve Moneki watching and following the conversation from Nax Vegas. That's Nakuru Pipeline. Uh, Asante Sana Moneki, great voices at New Band or something. Thank you. Uh, hey, Josfat. Josfat is a great fan of this show, Matt Musioka. I'm watching the show from Konza. Yeah, I agree that my past can affect my future. New Band, you are elite. Mkotop. 
Can I join the band? Haya, okay. I think there's some reason. Just for twenty one, I join in nine taku in gear. Loving the show. Say hello to Kirinyaga University comrades. Aya, kuna Kirinyaga kundani. Aya. Then we've got Sunday Boy Kenya following and then watching from Kirinyaga. Thank you so much. Please um, keep those co comments coming on, uh, on our Facebook page. And if you have a question, please ask uh, to our guest, guest uh, today. So I'm going to ask now the other two ladies to ask the, the, the questions. Go ahead. Thank you for the, your time. Um, I'm Magda Nduta from Nibs College. Magda. Yes. Mm -hmm. From Nibs College. Yes. So my question is, uh, how does one deal with when you feel like maybe your parents are absent when you're growing up? Like, uh, our parents are the people that we are looking up to, but now you feel like they're absent. Maybe they're coming out from work. They are, uh, you are home, they are home at nine. Maybe you slept at eight, mm -hmm. and you feel like they are, they are not there when you're growing up. When you, when you feel, you need that appreciation, but they're not there. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with that? Uh, As an feeling? adult now? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Magda. And then, uh, finally? Mm, um, I'm Akia here from the University of Nairobi. What victims of abusive relationships always have a way to excuse their abuser? You ask, you ask someone, why are you sticking to this relationship to fight this person doing this and that? They will always have an excuse. They will tell you, you don't know me because something of theirs didn't work out or something. Could you also blame that on past relationships? Okay, uh, could you just ask the question again so that the viewers from home can hear? It seems that we had a problem with the mic. Most victims of abusive relationships always have a way to excuse the abuser. Some, you'd ask someone, why are you sticking to this relationship despite this person doing this and that, which is obviously wrong, and they will always have an excuse. They will tell you, maybe this person is under mm. pressure. Mm. So could we also blame this on past relationships? Perfect. So two questions. Magda is wondering how do you deal now as an adult with uh, the fact that you had parents who never motivated you, or, you know, were there for you, and uh, questions from Hilda. Also now you have friends, a friend who is sticking in an abusive relationship. The woman is beating her. You know, we, ha we had recently that Mugabe was a victim actually for a long time of, uh, the wife was beating Mugabe a lot. Huh? Really? Uh, yeah, it I'm was hearing a, for yeah, the first time. You're hearing for the first time, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was on the news that uh, he used to get beaten to a point where the military wanted to hide him in the barracks. Anyway, that aside, let's start this question. Okay, mm. all right. So from Magda, how do you deal with feelings of rejection that you have carried from the past and um, what do you do with them now? It's good that no, you are... I, I, I don't know if... I, if I, I think the idea is, mm -hmm. how do I deal with... How do I try to reestablish a relationship with the parents who are absent while I was growing up? Is that... Yeah, okay. Oh, mm. to reestablish mm. a relationship? Yeah, my, my parents were absent. Mm -hmm. They never motivated me. They were not there for me. When, mm. I, when, when I, they came home, I'm already asleep. By the time they, I wake up, they're already gone to work. Mm -hmm. So how do I establish that emotional connection that was never there? Because now you feel yes, emotionally yes. Mm. distant mm. and disconnected from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, we, first of all, again, acknowledging that whatever happened, happened. And your parents did what they did for reasons and we are not excusing what they did but we are also not uh, blaming them and saying they are bad people mm, because mm. Uh, we find ourselves doing whatever we most of the time it's unconscious Correct. so really acknowledging and being able to ask yourself how is it affecting me now and what can I do to heal that relationship um, I think that reaching out to them would be one way and reaching out to them is to go and sit down and be very clear about what it is that they did without going in there to blame them or throw stones at them but this is coming with a desire that my 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 intention here is to heal this relationship and not to come and blame you and throw stones because I feel that at this point I want to have a relationship with you so acknowledging that uh, a wrong, and I'll mm. put it in quotes, a wrong was done is a huge part of the healing. And then the next step, I think you talked about forgiveness. Yes, correct. Okay. Mm. Part of the, that forgiveness is being able to speak out what it is that was done to you. It may not necessarily be to be, to be the person who did it, mm. but just being able to speak out and acknowledge. But if you desire to have a relationship with your parents, then it's, it, it would be good to go back and speak out what wrong was done to you and be able to say, I'm I'm here not to make you feel bad, but because I want now to reestablish a relationship. And the reason you want to do that, Magda, is because if that 
uh, gap is not closed, it will, th that's what you will transfer. Once you, you, you have a family, that's what you'll transfer to your mm. children. Mm. And it's going to be a cycle. So some of these steps we do, like forgiveness, they're mm. not necessarily because, you know, we, were, we are great people and we're amazing people and we just, you know, we, it's easy to, for, for, to forgive. It's because we want to be able to untie ourselves from the things that happen. Mm -hmm. And so we want to have a level of freedom so that we don't recycle that to, to the people who are... Correct, who, correct. Who, who, who will be who will under after, our care, us, yeah, yeah, so that we don't recycle yeah, that. Yeah. And journaling could be a good way, I guess. Journaling is yeah. a great way of just mm. sitting and saying, you know, talking about what happened to mm. you and just writing it out. Correct. Talking with a friend. Mm. If you're feeling like it's really affecting you a lot, talk, mm. talking with a professional. Therapist, yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, mm. to, talking to a professional therapist. Perfect. Yeah. Uh -huh, perfect. Yeah. And uh, Hilda was asking if the... Yes, yeah, she has a friend maybe who is stuck in an abusive relationship yes. and when she, she tells him or her, hey, look, this person is abusing you, this the victim excuses the abuser. Yes, mm. yes. And, and I think, again, we don't want to say it's completely because of their past, but yeah. their past could, Affect. could, could contribute mm. to where they are. Because someone who stays in an abusive relationship is someone who has a very low or a very unhealthy self-esteem. Mm. They, they really feel like they deserve being in that place. And, it, and, and you know, this cuts across social economic, you know, it doesn't matter how intelligent and how, how well put together you are or, or whether you have it all together or not. As long as someone has a um, sense that they're not good enough and they deserve to be battered and mm. abused, they are going to stay in that relationship. So the best way to help them is not to keep getting them, hey, get out of this. You know, what's wrong with you? Because you're battering them even more. It's more being there, supporting them, and letting them know, you know what? You are stuck. And, you, and I understand that you are stuck. Bec uh, it's understandable that you're stuck. Means when you're stuck, you don't have a way out. But there's a way out. The, helping people understand why they are in situations. You're a psychologist mm. as well. It's mm. really one of the greatest gifts you can ever give someone is mm. to help them understand why they're in that situation. So helping them understand that it's because they're feeling um, terrible about themselves, because they have a low self-esteem, and that's why they're staying there. And not necessarily saying, what is wrong with you? I mean, you just, you know, I mean, just pick your things and walk away. That is, that is um, almost impossible, it's Correct. inconceivable, mm. it's, co it's inconceivable for mm. them. Mm. So uh, it really just helping them understand where they are at is because of how they feel about themselves mm. would be the best gift that you can ever give them. And letting them know I'll support mm. you. Mm. Um, of course, if it is dangerous, if it's life-threatening, then we, we are not going to, to, to tiptoe around Correct. it. Correct. Yeah, that yeah. is when you mm. really just help mm. them to get out. And then so once, <laughs> once they're out, that's when now you, you help them understand themselves once they are out. Can someone intervene if the, the, the person you're trying to save and cannot get themselves out is actually getting physically abused? Can you ask a third party before this person gets, you know, you're talking about homicide these days. Yeah. Is it, is it okay to, you know, sometimes we are a bit slow to go into, a, you know, matters yeah. of relationships. Yeah. You know, but now you have someone is being physically abused and yeah. you know they're being physically abused. Yeah. Is it advisable to find a third party to go and, you know, yeah, and rescue this person physically or inform their parents, hey, your daughter is getting killed somewhere. Yeah, I think at that point, mm -hmm. you, you, there's no decorum, there's no tiptoeing, there's no diplomacy. Mm. When someone's life is in danger, uh, I think that's when you just step in and be like, hey, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get you out there. You need to get out there, out of there. And mm. also empowering them and helping them understand that if it happens, they actually have a voice. Correct. They can go, they can fill out a P3 form, they can, mm. you know, they can say it to someone. Because some, sometimes people stay in those relationships quiet mm. for a very long time. Yeah, correct. So just giving them that one step that you can actually go and fill out a P3 form. Uh, is it a P3 form? I think it's a P3, yeah. I guess yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> can fill so. it out because uh. that now gives a voice. Mm. The, it gives them a voice mm -hmm. and also sends a message to the abuser that, you know, it's no longer between the two of us. You cannot, you cannot you know, continue doing yeah, that. Yeah, you can't correct. continue. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is not our secret mm. anymore. Mm. Yeah. I think one of the things that she has mentioned, this person has uh, low self-esteem. One of the things that you can do is to help them to communicate value to them, to communicate that they, are, that they are worthy and that they are better than this, so that they can they start developing a sense of value in themselves, then they are able to make a judgment, by the way, I don't deserve this, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, mm -hmm. So it's very, very important. But bottom line, I think one of the things that I've realized is, 
at the end of the day, people have to make choices. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, unless they're willing to make a choice, there's nothing much really you can do. At the end of the day, yes, yes. it boils down to you yeah, acknowledging yeah. and just accepting mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. there is an issue here Correct. that needs to be dealt with. Correct. Yeah. Dr. Caro, it's been a pleasure. Please, clap for Dr. Caro. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for making time to be on the show. It has been such a pleasure. Our time, unfortunately, has run out. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure you would uh, not mind coming back again to continue this conversation. I would love to. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for making time. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen and ladies, that has been Dr. Caro, a lecturer at Moi University, a psychotherapist, a family uh, uh, parenting coach. And uh, uh, it has been amazing, you know, uh, having her here. And I'm sure you have learned a thing or two, together with my viewers right here. And remember, this show is going to be repeated tomorrow from 11.15, so you can watch it again and uh, learn the, the lessons once again. So I thank you for enjoying this. Now I'm going to read a few more comments before we close it up. Uh, yes, where are these comments? Where are these comments? Oh, there we have Jacqueline Pendo saying, yes, it does, 100% from experience. Where? Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Jacqueline. I think Atiga, Atiga, Eric, we had read that. Yes, it can really affect if you don't accept the situation you've gone through and find a way to work. Okay. Yeah, big up to these people who have uh, been watching and have liked our show. Gidua Juja. Gidua Juja. Farm. Yeah. And then you have Alex Mogendi John. Then Elizafan Kanari Jogoda. <laughs> and then we have Sand Boy Kenya. Ann Kahugi. Dennis Musundi. Ezra Nyaigot. Uh -huh. Kuna wengine? Scroll down. I'm a, oh, it's my Melissa story. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you so much for those who have been watching and uh, for, from home and thank, being part of this conversation. I make some noise for the University of Nairobi students. Can I hear some noise? <laughs> <laughs> I make some noise to the NIB students uh, in the house. Uh, and make some noise to for Shaul, uh, the spoken word artist. Uh, make some noise. Uh, make some noise for new band, yay! Amazing stuff. And finally, make some noise to our guest today, Dr. Caro. Uh, very good. And make some noise to the host of the Part Talk Show. All right, so thank you so much for watching the show. God bless you. Have a good night. New band, close the show for us. All right. All right.